Line uh, 10, welcome to the Savage Nation. Donald, are you there? I'm with you, Michael. I'm always with you. I'm always with you, actually. <laughs> well, I didn't know it for a while. I was hammering your staff. Where is he? Why won't he come on? What are the advisors saying? We have three topics, but a new one just popped up. Donald, on the trade deal with Asia, I know where you stand. This is not free trade. Even the AFL CIO Bernie Crackpot Sanders opposes it. Tell the audience, please, why you oppose the trade deal Obama's trying to force down our throats. Well, first of all, it's countries that are going to allow China to come through the back door. You know, they're going to get the biggest piece of it. You watch, as they always do. We're losing almost $400 billion a year with China. But almost as important, it's all manipulation. We don't do anything about currency manipulation. We don't know how they're manipulating. The single biggest threat we have is currency manipulation that... These countries, and in particular Japan and now China and others, not only now China, now China for years, what they've been doing to us, Michael, with trade manipulation, with monetary manipulation is incredible on trade. So what they do is they make it impossible for our companies to compete. And all it is going to do is take out jobs. And the reason it's going to pass and the reason you have some people supporting it on both Democrat and Republican side is because the lobbyists and the special interests are pushing them hard for certain companies that are big beneficiaries of this. But the country is a loser, and it means jobs are going out of the United States as usual. I read the deal in detail, the best I could do it, Mr. Trump, and I find that small mom-and-pop car part dealers – Clothing manufacturers in the U.S. will probably go out of business from foreign-made goods, which will flood into the United States. How can Obama get away with this when even the AFL, the AFL CIO opposes it? How is that possible? Well, the lobbyists representing the companies that want this to happen have contributed to Obama. But these are all lobbyists and special interests. And frankly, they probably represent the countries involved, the 11 countries. But they also represent companies that want this to happen because it's good for them but bad for our country and essentially what it does is it takes jobs out of our country and as usual it takes money out of our country and watch what happens china is going to come through the back door and they're going to become a part of it later on at, e at an even better deal so how can the democrat but donald how can the democrats push a trade deal like this after the devastation that nafta has wrought and the exportation, I'd have to tell you, you know better than I do what it's done to our indigenous industrial base and our, and our workers. How can they do this again when they know that even the unions oppose them? Are they going to be able to get around the unions? Well, NAFTA has been a complete and total disaster. And this one is going to be probably, I don't know, necessarily much smaller. Uh, this is going to be another disaster for the, for the country. You know, what it really does, it's sucking the money out of us and it's sucking our jobs away and it's sucking our base our manufacturing is going to become non-existent. I mean, these deals are just made for the special interests, made for the lobbyists. The lobbyists are making a fortune, and they're taking our, they're taking everything. They're just stripping our country. That's right, let's go to. I'm sorry, Donald. Donald, here's another huge issue. Last night, the very nice neurosurgeon Ben Carson seems to be channeling uh, some lunatics when he said, I think he's channeling John Bolton, the uh, guy who looks like a, a walrus, when he said that um, we, U.S. should not allow Russian jets to bomb in Syria, and he wants dogfights in Syria between United States Air Force jets and Russians. What's happening with, with Carson? Is he going crazy? No, it's, uh, you know, the whole thing is over there is, uh, first of all, we're backing rebels. You know, they talk about the free Syrian res rebels. Nobody knows who they are. Here we go again. You know, we backed rebels going into all sorts of places. We were backing a government that turned out to be a fictitious government in Iraq. And look what happened to Iraq. Uh, you look at Gaddafi, what happened over there with Libya. I mean, Libya, we backed rebels. You know what the rebels did to the ambassador and to the other people. Okay, these are the rebels we backed. Now, again, we're backing rebels. And as far as I'm concerned, if, if Russia wants to start getting into the quagmire, you know, we're in there for $4 trillion in the Middle East over the last number of years. We spent $2 trillion in Iraq alone. What do we have for it? We have nothing. You know what's going to happen with Iraq, Michael, is that Iran, right now as we speak, is trying to take over Iraq. They're taking it over. With the oil reserves, the biggest in the world, among the biggest in the world, it's unbelievable. So if Russia... Well, that, go yeah, in, but that, thanks to Obama, they'll be able to do the, the new Persia. 
I mean, ancient Persia was incorporating the land called Iraq, as you well know. And with a little help from John Kerry and Obama, we'll see uh, uh, Persia emerge. How about Vladimir Putin? I happen to support him. He's the only one taking on ISIS. He's the only one who's degraded them in a week while Obama has lied for a year now about taking them on. Do you support or oppose Russia's bombing campaign against ISIS? Well, it's not a question of supporting. I think it's wonderful that Russia is, and by the way, as of today, they're really hitting ISIS hard. And you know why? Because Russia doesn't want ISIS going into Russia. It's very simple, okay? Right. And they were saying, right. oh, he's hitting other people. He's hitting rebels that we're friendly with. I spoke to a general three days ago. He doesn't even know who these rebels are. We don't even know who these rebels are. <laughs> they could be ISIS. They could be worse than anybody that we have. They could be worse than Assad. So, no, I'm surprised when I hear people talking like, oh, gee, isn't it terrible? They want us to start World War III in Syria. You know that. I do know that. They're not thinking carefully. Have you met Vladimir Putin? Yes. You have? One time, yes, a long time ago. Do you feel... I'm that, with a great, by the way. I'm saying, if you, if you do win the presidency, and I certainly hope you do, do you feel that you could do business with Vladimir Yes, I do. And that's what I do. You know, deals are people. Deals aren't deals. Deals are people. Yes, mm. I think I would get along very well. I had the big Miss Universe pageant in, believe it or not, in Moscow two years ago. I got mm. to know so many of the Russian leaders and the top top people in Russia. I mean, honestly, these are people that are looking to do things. And, you know, Putin cannot stand Obama, hates him, and doesn't respect him. And that's not off to a great start. But how about this? He he leaves Obama a couple of days ago. The following day later, he starts bombing, and nobody knew it was going to happen, right? That yes. shows a total lack of respect. With that being said, if he wants to bomb ISIS, congratulations. Welcome to it. Let's save a little money and fix up our roads and fix up our bridges and tunnels and schools and airports. You know, we're in there for, okay, $4 trillion between everything for the last number of years. Four trillion dollars we've got to fix up our country and we owe mm -hmm. trillion by the way mm -hmm. you know who gets the oil most of the oil out of iraq by the way you know who takes it right you know who the china china, china does yeah china china gets the oil you know how much they've invested in the war zero. Zero. now speaking of china i read that china's uh, sending in special forces to take on isis as well in an israeli publication debka a week ago because the chinese want to take out the uyghur uh, Muslims who are fighting alongside ISIS. They don't want them coming back and causing trouble in China. Do you care to comment on that? That China is actually working with Russia to overthrow ISIS. I know China very well, and Michael, they'll only do it if they're going to get the oil. Remember I said, don't leave the oil. If you're going to leave, take the oil. Remember I said, you know who has the oil now? Uh, I mean, I will tell you, ISIS has oil. Everybody has oil. Everybody but us. We spend $2 trillion. We have nothing. But China will only do that if they get the oil. In other words, if China is going in, they're going in. They, they, everything they do is about money. China will go in if they're going to take the oil. So it's all about, uh, obviously, economic yeah. advancement, as most war is, by the way, about economics. So why is it that every war we are going under Obama, we lose? You talk about economics, trade wars we lose, shooting wars we lose. What is this man doing? Hey, Michael, do you know that in Afghanistan, nobody knew this, very rich in minerals. So while we're fighting in Afghanistan, very mountainous area, on one side of the mountain, China has massive excavators on the other side, and they're taking out all the minerals, and they're not doing any fighting at all. They're taking out all the minerals. I mean, you tell me what is going on. So, look, all of this can be changed so fast, Michael. You would be so happy if I win this thing. You will be so proud of this country, Michael. i tell you what. Well, you know, i got to tell you, Donald, on a personal level, you already make me hopeful. You already make me more proud to be an American. And you've given me something personal that you don't even know. I've worked very hard as an immigrant son to achieve what I have. And as you know, my family has worked very hard. They've achieved a lot. But we've had to hide it under the Democrat socialist machine. We've almost had to apologize for having succeeded uh, for working so hard. I feel proud of what I've achieved because of you, Donald, because you're willing to stand up and say you're proud of what you've achieved. You make me willing to stand up and say that. Do you know that you've had a positive effect already? Well, that's very nice for you to say that, and you've done an amazing job, and I, I look at your ratings, and I look at you, just you, 
and you know you've been a special guy you've been amazing and you've been really nice to me and i appreciate it but you know i get crowds we had in dallas texas in the american airlines center mark cuban's place where the mavericks play twenty thousand people in mobile alabama we had thirty five thousand people and i mean we filled it up in like three four days you know we didn't have like two months to fill it up we had days uh, I'm going to Las Vegas. That's going to be packed. Every place I go to, I was in Oklahoma last week on Friday, and we had 20,000 people surrounding the band shell. It was a park. The park was packed. They couldn't even get the people in the park, so they put them on the other side of the band shell. They couldn't even see. There's something going on. People are tired of being ripped off by stupid politicians that don't know what they're doing. So, what, hey, Donald, one, la one last point. I know how busy your schedule is. You may not even know this, but I only found this out a week ago. Do you know that you and I, I don't know whether the publishers have done it on purpose, they have your book coming out on October 27th, which is the exact pub date of my book, Government Zero. We're going to have dueling books, Donald, who are, which are saying basically the same thing. Did you know the publishers have done that? I didn't know it, but I, I actually saw a note from you, and I think probably mine's going to be a little bit later than yours, maybe. I hope so, but it might be a little bit later than yours. But mine is just about ready to go, I'd say, over the next. And basically, I'm talking about how to make America great again, you know, which is similar to what probably you're saying. You know, there's not that many ways. In other words, it's not that complicated. It's common sense. It's being smart. It's understanding. It's respect. It's leadership. And we can make this country truly great again. But if it keeps going this way, we're not going to be able to. It's going to be too late. Donald, we need good people. You said it yourself. You need smart people in every government position in order to save the country. You said you'd bring in one of the great negotiators. I loved hearing that because he'd make China finally, they'd finally make China uh, pay their, their fair share. But, you know, we have such corruption right now in science itself that there's virtually almost no real honest science anymore. And the best, best evidence I have for that is the fake global warming research. Almost every study comes out that's warped. It's all corrupt. Again, Donald, I'm going to put it out because I keep saying it because people are hearing it when you become president I want you to consider appointing me to the head of the NIH I will make sure that America has real science and real medicine again in this country because I know the corruption I know how to clean it up and now I know how to make real research work again I think that's great and I think that frankly no, I would leave radio for that Donald I would take a cut in pay that would be astronomical but I would do it for this country. You could pay me a dollar a year and I would do it just to make sure we have real science and medicine. Well, you know, you'd get common sense if that were the case, that I can tell you, because I hear so yes. much about the NIH and it's terrible. Beyond belief. Donald, I wish you great luck. Thank you for being with us. And I hope that I see you before Christmas at Mar-a-Lago. Very good. I hope so, Michael. And keep up the good work and I will see you and we will keep fighting and we will get this done. We will get it done. Thanks for being with us in the Savage Nation. Well, you heard it from... The man himself, Donald Trump, if you get a comment, the phone number is 855 I don't mince words. I generally do not uh, support candidates. I really have rarely ever supported a candidate in my 21 years on radio. I've avoided it. Uh, I am openly supporting Donald Trump for two reasons. One, I believe he can win. Two, I believe he can save America. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.